Okay, so <clears throat> all the announcements are done, and I guess we can start doing our thing. So I am going to be streaming some of the second Tex Murphy game, Martian Memorandum. Uh, came out in 91. It uh, is a little bit less experimental, as we will see, than, uh, than the first game, which uh, basically, to me, kind of ended up being a glorified text adventure. But uh, yeah, we will, um, we will take a look. So I got DOSBox all ready to go here. And let's, uh, let's see what we, there is to see, like I did last time. There's, again, a whole whack of files. Actually, does this type? No, that doesn't work. Rep. No, that doesn't work either. Oh, syntax of the command does work. So there's a config file, which is very cryptic, because there's no installer, as far as I could see, where you could usually do setup and stuff. Ah, see, so there's the mm-cop is the uh, the copy backup copy that I made, because by default uh, this game for compatibility's sake is uh, set to use Sound Blaster for audio effects and ad lib for music. And you know, since uh, I mentioned on the show a lot, I do have a, I do have an honest to goodness real life Roland MT32. I like using that when uh, whenever I can. So I have to go in and modify that config file manually. So here is the, the contents of this config file. If this old DOS command still works in DOSBox, yep, there we go. So that is so. So one four two three two is the uh, the revised content of that config file. The original content mm dash cop tilde one dot cfg was one four two three one. So the uh, each digit kind of represents something as is described in the manual here. So one is, the first one is uh, for mouse control. The second byte here is uh, set to four, which is sound blaster. The third one is the port for the sound blaster, which is set to, uh, what is that, two, which is 220 hertz, which is the default kind of sound blaster port as it always has been, or 220 hex, sorry, not hertz, this isn't electricity. Uh, the fourth byte is the Sound Blaster interrupt. It's set to IRQ5, so instead of changing the value in the config file, I just changed the value in the, uh, the DOSBox config, because DOSBox by default uses IRQ7. And finally, the one that I changed is the music device, one in the original one being AdLib and two being Roland, so now all the, when I start the game, the uh, lights on my MT32 are gonna do some fancy, fancy stuff. So that's uh, that's the extent of that. Ooh, excuse me, and we can uh, we can start rolling on this. So let's do what we did last time. Dir star dot exe. Let's see, and it is still mm. So let's uh, let's roll with Martian memorandum. Yes, Martian memorandum. Right, ms was mean streets. Mm is Martian memorandum. Boom. Okay, here we go. I'm liking the music. Nice MT32 beats. Got some credits going on. Brent Erickson. I'm sure I'm going to be talking about all these people on the show once I learn more information about them. Give these people their, their due. I don't... I don't like skipping credits. I forced my wife to stick around at, uh, at movies, too, to watch the credits, because I feel like people that put in all this effort to make these things deserve a little bit of credit. And maybe that's why I do this pod, the, do the podcast in the first place. But regardless of that, I read the manual. The manual is much, much shorter. The controls are much, much more straightforward. And here we are. So, last night was tough. I assume this is text talking. Last night was tough. Nearly getting iced always leaves me drained and jumpy. As a private investigator, I've been in tough spots, but that was nearly the end of the line. I ended up sleeping in my chair all day. Now the sun is setting, and I groggily stumble around the room, trying to regain my bearings. As I look out the window, I can see the San Francisco skyline and what's left of the atmosphere. Not so long ago, a gigawatt of nuclear missiles were launched by some 
frenetic third world country. Luckily for the shelters, most people survived. The ecosystem may not. Tonight, it seems the sky is extraordinarily red. Not the normal washed ruddy hue, but a thick, malicious, deep red. Something about the color leaves me edgy and tense. It's as if someone or something is targeting me. But then maybe I'm superstitious. I've never cared much for the color of blood. And now we're into the game. So here we are. Here is Tex. And uh, as we can see, this, uh, this game is certainly a little more traditional looking than, uh, than the original that we played, uh, or that I played about two weeks ago. I just put up the, uh, the YouTube clip tonight on that one. So we'll look, and let's look around our office. Mail has been shoved through the slot in the door. Well, maybe we should get that mail. You pick up the mail, take the cash enclosed in one of the envelopes, and you decide to file the letters. Okay. Open, go to, use. Where's my inventory? Travel, help. How about help? Help, ammo, lockpick, kit, lens, camera, file, drug, gun, switch, switch, window, mail. Well. Okay. Switch. So switch located left of the file cabinet. Operates the window shades. Move it. work? No. What if I click on the down arrow? Okay. Interesting. Ah, mail. So this is like the hint system. The mail contains something useful. Open it and the get it. I assume that's poorly. Let's just flip into the manual here. Maybe it'll tell me how to use my inventory. The story, searching rooms, interrogating, moving through the dock, traveling, inventory. Inventory. Text uses the get command. The objects can be retrieved either by using them in a room or offering them to a character. Oh, so if I click on use, all right, there. So that gives me my inventory. Everything takes some getting used to. As you guys can clearly tell, I, uh, I didn't play this game when it came out, so I'm just trying to figure things out. So what's this contraption? An old Olympus FM 72 inch fluid mount pneumatic tripod. Can I take that massive tripod? You can't take that, good to know. Nikon FB9000 no light infrared camera. It may not be the latest model, but it's seen tons of sex and violence in its day. I think we definitely need that. So let's pick up the camera. What's this red thing? The well switch is covered with fingerprints. Okay. Sink is full of unwashed dishes. The blue and green mold grows from the disposal. Cigarette putts float in the half full glass of beer. That's pretty. What's this thing? Nasty facts. Warning text if he doesn't pay his utility bills, his power will be shut off. Can I take my nasty facts? All oh, right, I remember this game. <laughs> this game loves fax machines. So, how do I go to? No, can't walk. Move. There we go. Nope. Uh, go to here. You can't go to there. I want to go to there. What's this on my desk? Several stubbed out cigarette butts lie in a pool of ashes. Table lamp. Antique table phone. Similar phone used by Bogart and the Altice Falcon. Your standard fedora. Let's get our fedora. Can't take that. Can't take that. <laughs> Travel. Texas office is the only place I can go. Okay. There we go. What if we move this switch? The switch slides into a new position. Ooh, well that's fancy. Let's look out the window. The fluorescent clouds are a curdled pink, reminiscent of 10-year-old Pepto-Bismol. Across the street, a red brick modern high-rise apartment building. Out on the street, a few mutant winos panhandle and assault unlucky passerbys. Well, that's unfortunate.
red sweater. Uh -huh. Ooh, bullets. Let's get those. Those could be handy. I know everyone who's played this game before is yelling at me now. Okay, I don't know what that actually was. Oh, lockpick kit. That's good. Good to know. Uh... Oh, that looks like a gun. Trusty gun. Should probably want to take that. You pick up the gun with care. Move. Let's move this switch and see what this one does. Looks like the fan stopped. I wonder if it's going to make me die. There are solid cherry wood with a mail slot and chicken wire reinforced frosted glass window. Oh, oh something on here. Your comlink is a portable fax communicator allows you to reach your answering service. And oh, okay, that could be handy. So let's get the comlink. Aha, here we go. Hi, Tex. Wow. We've got a new case and you won't believe who it involves. I'll transmit the information. Wow, 1991 tech or voice audio recording stuff. Okay, so Marshall Alexander, Terraform Corp 582 Market Street. Mr. Alexander wants you to come by to discuss the case. See his secretary to let you in. He'll be there all day. Okay. First, let's move that switch again. Yeah, probably better to have that running since there's virtually no atmosphere. Let's just make sure. Okay, cigarettes, calendar, table phone. Let's get that lens. That sounds like it could be handy. And er, let's save our game file. Go to office. Start. That'll do. Save. Okay. So we are good. Let's travel to Terraform. Wow, they pulled that straight out of Blade Runner. You don't have to be a private eye nor have a PhD to find Terraform Corporation in San Francisco. You don't even need to see too well. Just look up. Terraform is overwhelming. It's the biggest building in the entire city by the bay, or anywhere else. One step inside and you are instantly dwarfed by the 30-foot ceiling that arches overhead. The microwave motion detectors, pressure-sensitive pads, and robotic surveillance would make a Nazi nervous. Okay. All of the security must have emerged from the development of Terraform Corp. Terraforming is a 50-year plan to make Mars habitable. It must have been very dangerous work at the onset, raising a planet's temperature 100 degrees, designing and erecting an efficient solar shield, transmuting the lethal gases of the red planet, must have warranted risk, silence, and heavy security. Security? Yes, but this place makes you feel like the 7th grade gym class. Like 7th grade gym class on the first day. In the showers, going... Naked and ill-equipped. I guess I pass their check. A thick-necked guard takes me over to a turbo elevator, and I head for Alexander's office. Okay, here we are in Alexander's office. Let's look around a little. Plaque reads, Terraform Quart facilities located on Mars near the Tharsis Bulge. Phase 3 is now complete in meeting the goal of providing a breathable atmosphere. A tufted Corinthian leather, ooh, rich Corinthian leather. Sofa made from recycled Chrysler Cordoba, actually, is a con joke. That's good. Piece of art from the sculptor Sabatini. It protrudes from the floor at unsightly angles. Uglier works of art have been sold for more, but not in recent history. Okay, let's talk to the, uh, the sexitary. May I help you? Ooh. I'd like to see Mr. Alexander. Maybe you could answer a few questions. Let's see if she wants to answer a few questions. Two. Oh, it's down here. Two. I'm just too busy right now. Okay, well then let's do the other thing. 
I wonder if this whole game. May I help you? I re- wonder if this whole game is voiced to a certain degree. All right, let's talk to Mr. Alexander. Just a moment. We can see you now. She lets me in. I guess I will uh, go to. Uh huh. It's a little creepy. An original Renoir oil entitled Nice Flowers Part 1, and I will assume this is Nice Flowers Part 2. Uh, where's talk? Well, let's look at this dude. Alexander is 65, overweight, and sickly pale. He has an expression on his face that could bring a strong man to his knees. Fortunately, yours are just shaking. Good evening, Mr. Murphy. My daughter is missing. She may have been abducted. I need a man with a certain set of skills. (laughs) Okay. And do there we go. Something else was stolen from me, but no one must know that it's gone. Okay. Anything else? I already told you all you need to know, now do your job. Okay, let's get out of here. What about the secretary? May I help you? Clearly. How about two now? I'm just too busy right now. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Door to the ladies' restroom. Let's see, can I go in there and save the game? And ugh, get stuck in the corner. Two, because I'm two. There we go. Because I'm uncreative. Move the switch. Switch so a click, okay. Okay, I guess I can I go to ladies' restroom? Oh, would you look at that? I'm in the ladies' restroom. Privacy screen, electronic switch mounted thing. Cold fusion powered microwave hand dryer. We're still waiting for it to produce heat. Right, because cold. Move. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's look in the garbage. You start the porcelain bowl next to the toilet. Oh, it's not a garbage. It's smaller and has a nozzle which shoots water upward. You finally decide that this is a strange place for a drinking fountain. I believe that might even be a bidet. American Standard Water Miser Toilet. Okay, how about various types of soap? Empty Rubbermaid Royal Princess Garbage Can. Let's see if I can get the towel. Okay, how about the soaps? You don't need this girly soap. Okay, I'm probably, I might be missing something in here, but we'll just leave for now. All right, go to. Switch, secretary. I already did that. Move the switch, done. Washroom. Open the door by moving the switch. Elevator. Go to the elevator, moving the switch to the left of the door. If you wish to leave, office. Okay, all right. so let's go back in here. Sorry, go to. And let's look at hints in here. Privacy screen. Earring. Where is said earring? The earring is hidden under the towel. 
Well, that's not very challenging. Okay, let's move the towel. You move the towel slightly. Ding! Okay. I have an earring now. Use. Oh, I know what to do. Oh, go to. I bet you it's the secretary's earring. So let's use earring. Okay. Secretary. That doesn't. Oh, it's got to be hers. Okay. Look. Use earring. Okay, whatever. Uh. Travel. So let's see, do I have more? The trip out of the Terraform, out of Terraform is a lot more pleasant than coming in, and it's nice to have a client that looks like he can pay. So, Alexis Alexander, the daughter of the wealthiest man in the universe, is missing. What a ransom this dish would garner. But, in the information he transmitted to me, there was nothing to prove this was a kidnapping. Then he says something else was stolen from me, and acts as if this was more important than his daughter. I try to get more information on what it was, and he clams up on the subject. I don't think he's giving me the whole story, and one of the things for sure, he's desperate. At least he gave me a few places to start. Okay, so, Alexis is home. Jacques, Jacques Sparrow, Mac Malden, Rockwell Bosch. Okay, let's go to Alexis's home. That sounds logical. Fancy. They say money can't buy you happiness, but it sure can scoop up ev on everything else. I drop into one of Alexander's residences, the one Alexis was staying at before she disappeared. The place makes the Taj Mahal look like the projects. I enter the 10-foot spired iron gate with gilded points. The house isn't even in sight yet. As I roll past, a forest of flowering shrubs and short trees. Security cameras are everywhere. If Alexis was kidnapped, somebody was definitely asleep at the wheel. The maid at the door has been told I would be coming, and she let me in. I'm led through a hallway to a chamber of marble and glass to Alexis's room. It all resembles a mausoleum. I feel myself whispering so as not to wake the dead. All right. What is there to see in here? Oh, there's something on the ground. Is it an earring? Small piece of paper with the initials TMS written on it. What else have we got? A Fisher Ultimate Remote Room Control. No, that's not what I want. Move a switch on the control panel to change the mood of the room. Okay, I see what that does. Music is pretty catchy in here. Flip up the corner of the bedspread. Aha! What is this? A small card file box. Let's open it. Box opens with a click. Let's look again. <laughs> A small notation is made on a napkin from Wiener World. It says Chantal Vargas, apartment number 970. Is this a hint or could it be miscellaneous scrawling made at the restaurant that serves the biggest weenies in San Francisco? Well, let's get. Okay. Okay, anyways, I think we have that piece of information. What do we got here? Electronic door switch. Hermetically sealed cedar line temperature can clothed closet. Faint outline of a compartment in the wall. Single button is mounted in the wall. So let's move this switch. Aha! Uh -huh. Various women's cosmetics. Well, that's not very helpful. What if we open? You open bottle after bottle, but nothing seems just right. Ha ha ha. Let's move stuff. That will move. Then let's move this switch. I don't feel like moving the switch is the proper... Oh, hello. What's this? Various articles of lingerie from Victoria's Secret, business suits, 24-inch spiked collar, leash, handcuffs, and, and active sportswear. <laughs> wow. Okay, that was funny. 
Uh, what if we move this stuff around? That won't move. Okay. Let's go check our handy dandy. Panel link shows a picture. Okay, yes, clearly. Papers on the floor. Yes, I know that. Okay, looks like I did everything in here. I don't know if I love this hint system. It's kind of making things a little bit too straightforward. All right, let's save our game. I'll be ultra creative and call it three. Let's see what the Chantel. Well, maybe we should go down the list. No, let's go see who Chantel Vargas. No, text office. Jacques. Let's go see who Jacques Sparrow is. Ooh. The address of Jacques Sparrow is a three story white stucco and glass building designed after the war to be the avant garde of modern architecture. They failed. It looks too square and the windows need washing. Inside, it's just as dank and sticky as outside. I find a directory on the wall. Jacques Sparrow's office is on the third floor. I ride up the elevator, which smells similar to a cat marking its territory. At the end of the hallway, I see lettering Jacques Sparrow on pebble glass. I knock, no answer. I try the knob, but it's locked. I reach inside my pop it, pop kit and pop out a tool that makes opening doors a snap. I close the door around me, behind me, and look around. The place looks very familiar. An old roll-top desk, a swivel chair, and with a frayed pillow, and a couple of file cabinets. The door might as well have my name on it. The file cabinet was locked, but it was easy to pop open. Inside some cheap rye, a phone directory, and a manila envelope, there are a number of 8x10 glossies of very young-looking girls in leather. I'm lost in thought when I hear the doorknob begin to turn. I toss the folder back in the file and spin around. The door opens, and in walks a guy who looks like Errol Flynn in The Gay Adventures of Captain Blood. His face is tanned, and he's slim. When he sees me, his mouth opens and out drops the worst French accent I've ever heard. Mon dieu, what the Mon dieu, oh. what the hell are you doing here? That is a bad French accent. Oh, let's see, it looks pretty quiet here today. I've got a nice, you've got a nice studio, huh? How much for a sitting? This is certainly the right business for a low life sleaze like you. How about number two? Let's be reasonable. You could not afford me. Try the photographer at Kmart. Uh huh. That isn't exactly the attitude that made small business in its great institutions today. Listen, do do for brains, cooperate, and I might not have to get tough. Let's frick. I have friends who are very tough monkeys. <laughs> A scare queen like you couldn't count on Lassie coming to his rescue. I feel like we're getting off to a bad start here. Take off, Ledwood. Let's go back. Mon dieu, what the hell are you doing here? I cater to an exclusive crowd. I've got no time to waste with you. Oh, this guy isn't very helpful. Okay, let's go see Mac Malden. I'll come back here later. I walk into the old dilapidated police station, cross the reception room to a dully lighted inner corridor, and pass down the corridor to a frosted glass door at its far end. I open the frosted glass door and walk into an office where a big olive-skinned man with a tired oval face under a mat of thin hair dotted with dandruff sits behind an immense desk on which bales of paper are heaped. Max, a true San Francisco flatfoot. His biggest claim to fame is that an old relative of his used to be on a police show about San Francisco. Somebody said Max. Mac looks a lot like him. What brings you down here, Murphy? Looking for a client? How about number two? Up your Seamus! <sighs> oh, I'm not exactly idling away myself. My clients pay me to make your life easier. I know it's foolish for me to get angry at inanimate objects, but you make me mad and you're so lazy. Okay, let's do the nice one. Run along, Murphy, and don't let the door hit you. 
on the way out. Oh, I'm not very good at this. Let's try that again. What brings you down here, Murphy? Looking for a client? Free lunch. I'm trying to cut back. That's true, a guy like you doesn't need to buy lunch. You could live a year on what you spilled in your tie. Diet, you'd lose all that charm and ineffable style you've cultivated. Okay, let's do the nice one. Run along, Murphy, Gosh, and what is this? the door on the way out. Let's try that one more time. And now we'll just ask about stuff. What brings you down here, Murphy? Looking for a client? Okay, let's ask about stuff. I'm not ready to answer any of your questions. Okay, so I'm trying to cut back. Okay. Always ready with a gag. Well, I've gagged enough today. Oof, okay, these guys, are, these people are not very uh, forthcoming. Offer, okay, let's go see Chantal Vargas. Maybe she's upset that this whole thing happened. Chantal Vargas's address is the Hitchcock Building, a huge urban tower near my office downtown. These towers are self-sufficient living spaces that allow the residents of the building to avoid the decay and violence of the inner cities. I ring the bell, and a tired but striking woman with deep, hungry eyes and a long, unbrushed brunette hair answers the door. She's young, but there are signs of hard and fast living. Something rings familiar in those features. Then it smacks me. She's the mysterious woman I've seen dancing through the camera lens from my office window. I feel the blood rush to my face. Jeez, I hope she doesn't recognize me. Yeah? My name is Murphy. I'm a private investigator, and I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. I guess that's the one. Tex Murphy, don't you have an office across from my apartment window? Yeah. Uh, how about number three? Well, what do you think of the view? Ooh. How big a fool do you think I am? So, a little nervous? Get out or I'll let everybody know. Wow, I'm not good at any of this talking stuff. Let's try that again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Response one. Apartment window. Hey, Murphy, don't you have an office across from my apartment window? You are the peeping Tom. I ought to slap your face. What does that mean? You know what I'm referring to? I've seen him give you the happy powder, possession is a criminal offense, up to 10 years. Okay, let's do that. If you had proof, you might have something. Ugh. Okay, Rockwell, whoever, and then we'll come back. Okay, Rockwell Bosch. The work address for Rockwell Bosch looks, like more, looks more like a home. It is a large, solid house with lavender brick walls and white stone trim. I walk in, and I'm greeted by a young, pretty face with a nice smile. She asks if I have an appointment. I tell her why I'm here, and she leads me into Bosch's office. It's obvious why Marshall Alexander hired this guy to be part of his corporate brain trust. Whoa. A brilliant man, perhaps with even more brain power myself he has built a vast empire on his own with virtually flawless business decisions his health however has deteriorated over the last several months okay at least this guy's talking to me even though he's got a brain sticking out of his head he's become increasingly paranoid and has added even more security people to his staff the disappearance of his daughter has contributed significantly to his mental and physical degeneration see same thing Alexis has always been indifferent towards her father's company in the past, but Marshall has confided to me that the majority interest of Terraform would go to his daughter when he dies, if anything happened to Alexis. Control of the business would go to Marshall's wife, Nora Desmond Alexander. For that reason alone, it's, one of, the, it's of the utmost importance that Alexis is found. I think with the right counsel, Terraform would be much better off with Alexis. Okay. Rockwell Bosch. As a corporate attorney, I enjoy a special relationship with Mr. Alexander. I consider both Alexis and Marshall to be good friends. He rarely makes any business decisions without me. No one ever gets to know Marshall Alexander very well. A man who climbed to the top of the business world makes many enemies. Unfortunately, Marshall Alexander is one of them. 
Jacques Spiro is a professional photographer who used Alexis as a model in recent months. I must say I didn't approve of some of his work. Alexis is beautiful, but she didn't develop any marketable skills. She did the best she could with what she had. Okay. Nora Desmond Alexander. Nora was a successful movie actress at one time. When she married Marshall 15 years ago, she gave up her career. I had the feeling she always resented giving up her career. Okay, what does this mean? I don't know anything about that. Police Lieutenant Mac Malden was the officer who investigated the Alexis Alexis's disappearance. He came up with nothing on the kidnapping theory and no leads as to where Alexis is. Alexis mentioned Chantal on occasion. I believe they were friends. Okay. Alexis is a headstrong and beautiful girl. Her past hasn't been totally innocent. When she was younger, I spent a lot of time straightening out her life. I'm sure Mr. Alexander told you his daughter was kidnapped. I'm not so sure. Just before her disappearance, she started to fall back on old habits. She became very resentful toward her father and his company. If she ran away, I don't really know where she would go. And what about me? I hope you're a good PI. You'll have to be to solve this case. Okay. So let's go talk to Mac Malden again. What brings you down here, Murphy? Looking for a client? Okay, let's try this. I'm trying to cut back. Always ready with a gag. Well, I've gagged enough today. Brings you down here, Murphy. Looking for a client? Up your Seamus. How about number two? I know oh, I'm going to go. I'm talking to you, Murphy. What do you want? What? Uh, Always ready with a gag. Well, I've gagged enough today. Okay. Let's try that again. So is it that you just have to find the right... What brings you down here, Murphy? Looking for a client? You gotta find the right... Okay, so it's... Two... No, nope, nope, that's the one that didn't work. Oh, right. Da -da -da. Two... I know I'm going soft in the head from talking to you, Murphy. What do you want? What? Jam it! We're too busy! I notice there's some tension here. What's going on? Come on, or I'll help each other in the past. How about one? If I don't get evidence on the Andretti case, I'll be out of a job! Run along, Murphy, and don't let the door hit you on the way out! Okay, almost there. What brings you down here, Murphy? Looking for a client? Uh, so what was it? It was two. Up your Seamus. Seamus. That one. I know I'm going soft in the head from talking to you, Murphy. What do you want? What? Validation. Jam it. We're too busy. Okay, this one. If I don't get evidence on the Andretti case, I'll be out of a job. And now, information. If you want my help, give me something on Andretti. Okay, I will do that. What if I go back to... Terraform. Let's save... Four... Enter... Save... Talk to her. May I help you? I'm just too busy right now. Sure you are. Talk. May I help you? Oh, response one. Just a moment. He's not available. Well, that is unfortunate. 
I feel like she knows something. May I help you? I'm just too busy right now. Such a hard-working secretary. Okay. What's back? Anything back in my office that I forgot about? Use comlink. Okay. What's up? Find out stuff about TMS. I'll transmit the information. TMS is the acronym for Trans Martian Shuttle. The office is in the old ferry building down on the pier. If you're looking for a way to Mars, you'll have to wait a while. The next one leaves in four weeks. That's good to know. Marshall Alexander. I'll transmit the information. I'm sure you will. Marshall Alexander. Fortune magazine currently lists him as the richest man in the world. Alexander founded Terraform in 2019. The company has many successful diversified companies tied to Martian development. Alexander keeps his corporation veiled in secrecy. Background information prior to 2019 was lost in D-Day attack. Okay. Terraform Corporation? I'll transmit the information. Terraform is Marshall Alexander's company. They are specializing in the terraforming... Where'd it go? In terraforming the Martian planet to build a suitable atmosphere for habitation. I'll transmit the information. Rocco Bosch is an attorney. You'll find him at Pacifica... In Pacifica at 544 Hillside Drive. I'll transmit the address. He's a professional photographer. His address is 1820 whatever in San Mateo. I'll transmit the information. Nora Desmond Alexander is Marshall's second wife. She has a house in Beverly Hills on Benedict Canyon Drive. DMS we did. Mac Malden. I'll transmit the address. Mac Malden's precinct is on Market Street. That's good. Chantel Vargas. I checked the resources and information on that subject. Alexis. I'll transmit the information. Just in case you forgot, Alexis Alexander is the daughter of Marshall Alexander. He hired you to find her. This is a snarky watch. Uh, you may want to check with your doctor about... Oh, shut up. Okay, let's see. Andretti. I'll transmit the information. Here's a summary of the examiner's article on Andretti's death. Congressman Angelo S. Andretti was murdered in his last in his San Mateo home last night. Police believe Andretti was killed because of his relentless pursuit of underworld crime lords. And I probably don't need to check myself out. See you later. Well, there's some information there. Use lens. I don't have to place place for material on camera. Go to camera. Can't go there. Move camera. Look camera. Aha. Let's see. Is this going to be sexy? Oh, I guess I need to use. Oh, I thought I had film. Weird old lady. Weird old lady. Am I supposed to like be a creeper here? Ooh. That's interesting. Can I go this way? There's what's her name dancing. <laughs> she knows I'm watching. That's kind of creepy. No more film. Does he do anything? No. Okay, so I assume. Oh. Oh, right. So if I get film, then I can get proof. So let's see if there's film in here somewhere. Film, film, film. Okay, let's open the filing cabinet. Maybe there's stuff in there. The has been stuck shut. The door has been stuck shut. Souvenir. Doesn't open. 
Okay, so I need film for my camera. Okay, use it. I thought I picked up gun, cash, comlink, ammo, earring, paper. File drawer. Open this. <laughs> File drawer, gun, switch, switch window, mail, photos. Photos. The photos will only show up after you've shot them using your camera. <laughs> it's good to know. Tripod. Use the tripod for photos, build for mount the camera to it. Okay, I guess there's nowhere to get film in here. So if I open the second drawer. Drawer slides open and you bore yourself reading old cases. You haven't had anything real interesting since Main Streets. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's travel. Let's go back to Terraform. Oh no, I can't talk to him. Let's go talk to this jerk again. Mon Dieu, what the hell are you doing here? This is really bad. Response three. And what business are you in? Dog, you dare to insult me? I've got no time to waste with you. Let's try that again. Mon Dieu, what the hell are you doing here? So let's see, three worked. And what business are you in? Three. Big dog, no. you dare to insult me? One. Take your clever repartee and slide out the door. <laughs> this guy's got a bad accent. Mon Dieu, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> okay, two. You could not afford me. Try the photographer at Kmart. One. Uh. Take your clever repartee and slide out the door. Take off, Flatwood. If you need help, call the Salvation Army. What's that supposed to mean? Mon Dieu, what the hell are you doing here? I cater to an exclusive crowd. Big dog, you dare to insult me? Cater to an exclusive crowd. You said that already. I've got no time to waste with you. Take off, Flatwood. If you need help, call the Salvation Army. <laughs> okay. Oh, that guy re oh, right. We haven't talked to her yet. Let's go do that. Maybe we'll get some more info. Nora Desmond's house is not so much. It is smaller than the Palace of Versailles and probably has fewer windows than the New York Trade Center. I walk to the side entrance and press a bell somewhere. A set of chimes made a deep, mellow sound. A man in a striped vest and gilt buttons opens the door. I give him my credentials and tell him why I'm here. He leaves for a minute and returns. Mr. Murphy, if you will come this way, please. We go down a hall. It's a very quiet hall. We turn a corner and there is more hall. The butler reaches a door and knocks. The door opens and there stands Miss Nora Desmond. I remember gazing at her in films when I was a tyke, but seeing her now is something of a shock. She has been worked over more than a few times with, plas with a plastic surgeon's scalpel, but her face still looks old enough to be her own mother's. She is having a difficult time getting her eyes to focus, and by the fragrances, it's obvious she was sloshed. I think to myself that drunks often let their guard down. If I'm careful with her, she just might be loose-lipped enough to tell me something useful.
Okay, so what can we ask her about? He treats me like dirt. I get no respect. I used to be somebody. I was an actress and a singer. Now what am I? Nothing. He doesn't give me the time of day. He and that slut daughter of his, well, he isn't going to last forever. And if his daughter is still missing, I'll get the whole estate. It's my husband's company now, but soon it will be mine. Oh, see, she, she doesn't seem super... Slimy ambulance chaser, if you ask me. I know nothing about that. I was big, big, big. I gave it all to him, that ingrate. I was beauty beyond compare, a movie star. Now what am I? Well, someone else wants me. Lowell Percival is interested in me, and he may just get what he wants. I know nothing about that. I know nothing about that. He's a powerful man, and someday he'll be bigger than my husband. A man like that knows what he wants and takes it. He wants me, I'll tell you that. I don't know nothing about that. She's a no-good tramp. Well, I say good riddance, no sweat off my nose. I say she doesn't deserve a cent of his money. I've been with him all these years and giving him my love and respect. All right, this is his second wife. So obviously not the mother of... What's her name? She treats him like a cockroach. If he dies, she's going to get rich, and that isn't fair. She's only my stepdaughter anyway. I don't know nothing about that. You're a handsome devil. Maybe you and I could make some music together. Ooh, creepy. Okay, did I get something here? Let's go talk to this dude again, since he's helpful. Ugh. Angela Andretti, he was the congressman that was murdered. I'm afraid that's all I know. Lowell Percival, I don't know anything about that. Already asked, already asked, already asked. Don't know about TMS. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to Alexis's house. All right, this isn't helpful. See, it's this guy. I just gotta get the right set of... Mon Dieu! What the hell are you doing here? Okay, let's try that. I cater to an exclusive crowd. Okay. Big dog, you dare to insult me? Take off, Flatwood. Okay, so it wasn't that. If you need help, call the Salvation <coughs> Army. I'm sure this guy will talk if I just get the right number, get Mon the right Dieu. thing. What the hell are you doing here? Okay, so one. I cater to an exclusive crowd. One. Big dog, you dare to insult me? Two. I cater to an exclusive crowd. Two. Big dog, you dare to insult me? Two. I've got no time to waste with you. So Mac already talked. Let's go talk to Mac again. Oh. What brings you down here, Murphy? Looking for a client? Okay, come on. Oh, I gotta go through this all again. Offer. Gun, cash, comm link, ammo, earring. Paper? I don't need that crap. Offer. Earring. Okay, one. I'm trying to cut back. Tie. Always ready with a gag. Well, I've gagged enough today. So we already talked to her. We talked to her. We've already talked to all these people, but... Okay, so you know, let's uh, 
that'll do for now. And uh, I may pick this up later, or I may just put this up as is. So yeah, I mean that was kind of a a good a good little uh, example of the game, I guess. So it seems like it's it's quite a bit of. I know there's one kind of little action sequence where you're crawling through uh, through some ducts, at least according to the manual. And uh, of course, more information will come out when uh, when the podcast comes out. But I think that's a good uh, a, a good a good little piece of. Playthrough, I have a good idea of how the game rolls. It's uh, kind of similar to the first game in that you're still doing a lot of <clears throat> walking around, talking to people, interviewing, getting information. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone, for watching, for, for hanging out with me here while, uh, while I play through this. And uh, we'll catch you next time.